I'd like to do something that I know can be useful to the students. And so you need a guinea pig, so I'll be a guinea pig. I don't mind a bit. He's fantastic. Rene's great. He's, he's incredibly um, friendly and patient, and he really enjoys the experience of getting to to talk to you, and he really feel like he's participating in your education. I hope they learn something. I'm learning something from them, too. He's allowed me to practice on her and practice the new skills that we're learning in class. How long have you had this um, shoulder um, injury? Let's see, I guess about two or three years. Two or three years. Sometimes it gets quite painful. But... My experience at Park Shore is uh, a delight and also uh, quite rewarding. It's uh, quite a privilege to be able to enter people's lives where they allow us to, to come in. Bring it across your chest here. Any pain there? We started off um, learning physical assessments uh, in the beginning of the uh, fall quarter to prepare us to, uh, to see our residents at the, the retirement home. It's really useful. When we're practicing with our fellow students, that's the first time we've actually laid hands on and tried these different procedures. Some of them are very straightforward and some of them are a little bit more complicated. The coracoid is right in there. Across this way. And so doing that with each other and kind of getting feedback from each other is incredibly helpful. And hold it out here about 90 degrees and then I'm just going to let go. Yeah. Yeah. And then have you slowly lower through it. Okay. The practices over time they became muscle memory and, 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 and routine. The shoulder, here to the other shoulder. Uh, so that when we're in front of our residents that we are competent. Even though we're, we're scared, fearful, um, we, we actually do know the stuff. Yeah. We do know our, our history and our interview skills that we practice in class. As part of our BCS, our basic clinical skills class, they will have us go to different retirement homes across Seattle where we will just sit down with otherwise healthy, high-functioning elderly people and they'll let us practice their our basic clinical skills on them. We got to see our patients once a week during the, the quarter interview the, the patients, get to know them, learn their health history, learn about their lives, uh, their social history. One of the great things about having the retirement home volunteers is that they are people who have interesting medical histories. And so in the basic clinical skills course, the first part is really learning how to take a history and how to organize it. And if you have a person who has a complicated history, it's a lot more interesting and it teaches them the skills of ordering, okay, that belongs here and that's this, what's a current problem, what's a past problem, and then combining it with the exam skills, um, it really makes a, a very good lesson for them. Each student is generally paired with one retirement home um, resident. So that was nice. So mine was an older woman named Sally. She was 90 years old. And really, really sweet lady. My hand's too cold. They're cold. <laughs> not too cold. We would, yeah, always do the exam and uh, yeah. the, the patient interview, but we'd also do a lot of talking on the side too. She'd yeah. tell me about her family and did they like them? The fiance? Nice. <laughs> That's <Very> good. Nice. <laughs> um, I think it was enjoyable for both of us. It is a, a huge privilege to, to, to learn about them. We're gonna have you curl your fingers this way. Great. And I'll have you roll your wrist this to way. be able to be their confident with do it to their you. illness, 
their their history. Kind of do some light stretches. Any pain and problems no. with that? Great. And I, it's, I think more rewarding learning about people than, than just diseases. This way? Great. Obviously, that's what I'm, I'm here to, to learn uh, in medics is about diseases. It's very interesting and in, in how to treat that. But um, I think the, the, the neat thing that we get to do is, is really learn about people's lives and, and their rich history and, and who they are. You're getting a massage. You're getting a massage. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it all. <laughs> Any pain there? No. On your side. Is any of that uncomfortable? No. No. Okay. I'm just gonna feel right here, feeling your temporal artery, and then I. Oh, can you open and close your jaw? There you go. Perfect. And is that painful? Creaky, creaky. <laughs> it creaks a little bit. Is it painful? No. no. Okay. No, no. Okay. Because we're getting a whole new skill set, we're we're learning an incredible amount of material. Getting to spend time with Renee and getting to talk to him as a kind of patient, it's been incredibly um, useful and valuable for me. I've, I've felt myself growing as a, as a member of a healthcare team. I've felt yeah. myself yeah. learning how, how to better explain things to you. Whereas when I practice with other students, it's, it's easy because they know what I want, so they immediately do it. Whereas when I'm, when I'm hanging out with you, I, I need to really think about how we communicate and how I'm presenting myself. and. Um, you've definitely helped me kind of grow and mature. You're just naturally yourself. That, that's the impression I get. And uh, that's very good. Thanks. Yeah. You've been fantastic to work with. <laughs> yes. Each time they have to approach the patient, explain what they're doing, they have to, you know, make the patient comfortable in whatever environment it is and then after the visit they come and they present so this is my person uh, she's a 93 year old male that's um, in mild um, distress due to his um, uh, lower back pain with ambulation slight muscle atrophy of the um, right hand Okay, let's recap. So we did uh, <coughs> chief complaint. We didn't really do HBI because she didn't really have a chief complaint. We did pass no Denies, paresthesias, weakness, numbness, or pain. I think presenting was a difficult thing for me. As an ear nurse, I'm very good at being very brief and getting to the point. So, you know, I will push a stretcher into a trauma bay and hand someone an EKG and say, STEMI, chest pain for 10 minutes. And that's the story that they need to know to get started. But there's a very specific pattern that providers are trained to present in so there's it's it's a it's a template and apparently it's a secret code that everyone knows that I haven't known up to this point the first time I guess I wasn't exactly sure what I was supposed to say or what um, what information to give um, but once I had a better idea of um, yeah the information that we were, should give and what we shouldn't give um, uh, what was important to say and what wasn't important to say um, we got more comfortable with it, with the practice. In the clinical settings, people judge our students based on how they present. And if you are stumbling with your presentation, they don't think you know what you're doing. And that's not always true. People who have difficulty with presentations can be really knowledgeable of what they're doing, but it doesn't appear that way. So we start out right from the beginning, really stressing presentation. I've been let in on the secret, so now I know the secret code. But a few days later, he went and saw his doctor, and at that time was diagnosed with a fracture. I think that this component of the program is one of the most rewarding for the students and for the volunteers. And I think it's really important for them to have the opportunity to do the exams on people who are not in their age group. I mean, our students' average age is about 34, so it's not like they're teenagers. But older people are different than younger people, and um, they have different pathologies, and so it's a, just a rich opportunity for them to really see um, how you do the engagement, how you do the exam, how you adapt the exam, and how to approach 
this person as a provider because all of them have done other things. They may have been nurses, they may have been EMTs, but it's different to be the provider. With my background in intensive care, that, that piece, that slacking of continuity and, and seeing the person from, from the beginning health and, and other pr perhaps problems and then improving them uh, afterwards, I, I got to experience that at, at Park Shore. For example, Bruce had uh, a fall and uh, sustained some, some bruising and, and some uh, soreness in his chest. I followed him. Um, where he was getting physical therapy as well. And I got to see the following weeks the results of those physical therapies. How about here? Just checking your hips. And over time, I saw that um, subside and, and improve. It's a primary relationship. Right. It's a therapeutic relationship. And there's a skill to that. And they're learning that skill. No problem. Did that increase your pain as well? And just to see that progression from, uh, say, one problem to, to now, where it's uh, no longer afflicting him or bothering him, it was just really neat. It's a very important um, element for them to do it in a, in a warm kind of environment. This is my oldest daughter, Sophia. She's the two and a half year old. And then this is Jonah. They're not being timed. They're not being graded on everything. They're learning. Thanks, Renee. OK. Yes, Kate. <laughs> what are you doing today? Have any plans? Today, they are having a Christmas party, yes. Oh. I'm not going to be here because I have to go to a meeting. Oh, OK. At the spaghetti factory. Oh. I'm at the air decorated for Christmas too. But my doctor is going to be. It really pulls together some of the most important elements that we want them to have when they go forth.